and welcome to this training session on machine learning for GPU. Um, in this introduction section, we're going to talk a bit about what is a GPU um, and which machine learning libraries support the use of GPUs and just a bit about why you might consider using a GPU for your machine learning code. So the objectives of this section are to discuss the differences between CPUs and GPUs and to provide some examples of Python machine learning libraries that support the use of GPU. So GPU, it's uh, an acronym, stands for Graphics Processing Unit, and it's a specialised kind of computing processor that contains many cores. Now, a processor core is an individual processor, the computer chip inside the processing unit that actually performs calculations. Um, today, even CPUs are generally multi-core processors, which means that they contain more than one core. Um, and that increases their performance because obviously the more cores you have, the more calculations you can do simultaneously. Um, it is a bit confusing. The terms processor and core often get used interchangeably. Um, and so you have to be a bit, a bit careful um, about the context when you're talking about them. But um, compared to a CPU, a GPU doesn't have just one or two cores or maybe four cores for a quad core processor, but they will have instead thousands of cores on a single processing unit. And these cores, the, the, the reason for having so many cores is to, um, is to do a large number of parallel processing operations at the same time. And this was originally designed in order to render 3D graphics um, for things like video games. So these were operations on images that required the same operation to be applied across thousands of pixels. So you're applying the same operation in parallel across a very, very large data set. But of course, um, their utility was seen to extend beyond uh, graphics processing directly. And now we use them for many things, including, of course, machine learning. So in the um, on the lesson page, you can see a sort of a, a quick um, comparison between CPUs and GPUs, um, which has come from the NVIDIA website. So CPUs may have multiple cores, but certainly nowhere near as many as a GPU. CPUs are generally considered to be low latency processing units. That means that there is um, a very, very short time delay before the processing starts. So low, the latency is the amount of time it takes to start a processing, a process happening. So low latency means that processes happen very quickly, whereas GPUs are designed to be high throughput, which means that once the process has started, it transmits a lot of information at the same time, um, which makes them very good for parallel processing. Um, whereas CPUs, on the other hand, are more typically used for serial processing, which means that they, although they can do more than one operation at once, they can do a handful of operations at once, um, that's nowhere close to what a GPU can do, which is thousands of operations at once. Now, the downside to this is that in order to fit that many cores onto a GPU, the cores themselves have to be quite small and highly specialised. So there's less flexibility in the processing that you can do with a GPU compared to a CPU. So the, the, you tend to find that GPUs are very, very good at doing specific types of processing but they don't have the sort of the universal flexibility and um, general purpose efficiency as CPUs. So um, whereas GPUs are very efficient for performing things like highly parallel matrix multiplication, because that's an important application for graphics rendering, they're not necessarily as efficient at performing other tasks. So it depends on the application itself whether you want to use a CPU or a GPU. Now, one of the terms that you'll hear a lot when people are talking about GPUs um, is, is the word CUDA. Um, CUDA or possibly OpenCL. So CUDA is um, basically a framework that allows you to access the parallelization of the GPU um, efficiently uh, from software, from, from normal software. Now, CUDA itself is a framework that was developed by the um, computing company NVIDIA who produce GPUs, um, and it is a proprietary framework um, that only works on NVIDIA GPUs. Um, OpenCL is an alternative to CUDA, which was originally developed by Apple 
but is now um, as an open source um, framework for allowing people to use GPUs um, and uh, other digital signal processes, in fact, not only GPUs, but also, for example, FPGAs. Now, both of these languages are compatible with Python and allow you to implement parallel processes on a GPU without needing to explicitly specify the parallelization, which is great. Um, uh, they do the optimization for you. So when you um, find that you are using a Python library, which is able to use the, the GPU, in fact, it will use one of these frameworks to access the GPU underneath. Um, and what you tend to find is that most Python libraries will use CUDA. Um, and the reason for that is because they are designed to work with NVIDIA GPUs. So the two major providers of GPUs are NVIDIA and AMD. Um, they're both major vendors, but what you tend to see is that NVIDIA is currently the most common GPU vendor for um, most machine learning applications and also for cloud computing. So what that means is that when the people who write the software libraries um, want to make them GPU enabled, they have to make a choice about how they're going to spend their time. And since NVIDIA is the most common um, GPU for cloud computing platforms, um, most libraries are CUDA enabled, so they only work with NVIDIA GPUs. So sticking with the theme of, uh, of NVIDIA, um, you can see in the lesson um, a little list of some of the most common um, GPUs, and in fact, common NVIDIA GPUs. Um, now, when we talk about GPUs, you tend, you'll tend to hear people talking about what kind of GPU they have. Like they'll say, oh, I've got a K40, or I've got a K80, or if they're extremely lucky, they'll have a V100. And what they're really talking about is how many cores they have on their GPU and how much memory they have. And you can see from the table that the number of cores for different GPUs is, is, is always in the thousands, but it does vary. So um, a typical numbers go from anywhere around 2,000 cores up to just over 5,000 cores for a GPU. And the memory available um, these days goes from about 12 gigabytes up to 32 gigabytes, which is really quite sizable um, for a GPU. However, it's still very small compared to a CPU. So if you think about the kind of memory that's accessible from a CPU, it's typically in the hundreds of gigabytes, possibly up to a terabyte of memory. Um, so the memory limitations of GPUs are one of the things that we will talk about during this lesson in the later sections, um, but they're also one of the, the most significant restrictions of using GPUs for, um, for doing any kind, of, any kind of processing, in fact. Um, now, the other thing that I haven't included in the table here, but I'm sure you can Google, is that there's also a massive difference in price between these different GPUs. So when you're deciding um, which GPU to buy or if you want to buy multiple GPUs for a computing center, you have to balance up not only the, the number of cores per GPU, but the cost per, the cost per GPU. So lots of different considerations. Now, in terms of machine learning, um, basically all of the major Python machine learning libraries support GPUs. Um, and that includes TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, and Cafe. Um, and not only do they support GPUs, but they also support um, multi-GPU processing. So you can use multiple GPUs at once if you are lucky enough to be using a machine that has multiple GPUs available. Um, one library that you'll see is missing from this list, um, which you're probably quite familiar with if you've completed the Introduction to Machine Learning lesson, um, is the Scikit-Learn library. Now, Scikit-Learn doesn't support GPU processing at the moment, and in fact, there are not even any plans to implement GPU support. And the reason for that is that Scikit-Learn is not primarily a neural network library. So TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, and Cafe, they're all designed to um, help users build neural networks and convolutional neural networks. Scikit-Learn focuses on the um, non-deep learning aspects of machine learning, things like random forest support vector machines um, and things like that. And the reality is that GPUs are not as helpful for non-deep learning applications of, of AI. 
and so scikit learn just doesn't need them is the is the reality um, which brings us on to the next point, which is, you know, should I use a GPU or why should I use a GPU for my machine learning code? Well, the matrix operations that GPUs are optimized for, those, those graphics rendering operations, are exactly what happens in the training step when you're um, training a deep learning model. Those uh, big matrix multiplications to, to apply the weights in your machine learning model um, are exactly what GPUs are optimized for. So although they may have um, uh, very small and specialized cores, their small and specialized cores are small and specialized for training neural networks. Um, and certainly if you start to build larger deep learning models with uh, many, many layers and many, many neurons, then those huge numbers of uh, weights in your network and the matrix multiplications that result from those weights during the training process are probably best done on a GPU. Um, so if you're using a neural network, in particular if it's a big neural network or you're using a very large data set, then yes, a GPU is probably for you. However, if you're not using a neural network as your machine learning model, you're probably going to find that a GPU doesn't improve your computation time. Um, it's really those large matrix multiplications that, that make the GPUs useful. And likewise, if you are using a neural network, but it's not a very big one, so if it's just a sort of a two hidden layer multi-layer perceptron, then it's also not necessarily the case that a GPU will be any faster than a CPU. Um, and in fact, it's, it's quite likely to be a lot slower. Um, and we'll see, that, um, we'll see that that is the case at, in a later stage of this lesson. So, um, in the next few sections, what we're going to do is we're going to follow on from the introduction to machine learning lesson, where you created a neural network using PyTorch to classify particle physics events. And we're going to build on that network and show you how to put it on the GPU and to discuss some of the, the more, um, uh, the more, what would you say, common, common issues that come up. Um, when you're using GPUs. So thank you for listening. Uh, the key points that you should have taken away from this, this section are that GPUs are great for highly parallel processing, uh, in particularly matrix multiplications. Um, however, CPUs are more flexible than GPUs, so they are more generally useful. GPUs are only useful for very specific applications. Um, however, one of those specific applications is uh, training neural networks, so neural network applications in machine learning, and that's what we're going to look at for the rest of this lesson.